This is a brief video which will simply answer the question taking into account the timeline of all empires which had established themselves in the subcontinent did they influence each other enough to leave a mark on the modern countries which constitute the region the major empires which are known to have existed in this area and which still have archaeological remnants and anthropological evidence are identified in the timeline of this video as shown. On this, we have three lines representing three separate layers of appreciation of core concepts. Basically, there are three lines and each line has, a, has an identifiable meaning, a purpose to why it has been added over there. And so, each line serves a purpose to the video itself. These lines are called layers to explain this video's way of actually trying to answer the question which we postulated at the beginning. <clears throat> Layer one, the red line, is the empires which are present at various points of the subcontinent. Layer two, the yellow line, correlates when there were any interactions between these major players. At the same time, layer two could also be considered all major events that happened outside of the subcontinent that did in some form or capacity influence the people who were living in this particular area. And layer three, the green line highlights time which has passed. So the duration or the timeline from when we are actually beginning our overall analysis through to the time when the empires in the conventional sense concluded. Incidentally, we are specifically focusing on empires that were identified politically as empires. They were seen as empires. They weren't seen as as criminal entities that call themselves empire when in reality they're not they're just a gathering overall so keeping that in mind we are focusing this video accordingly so layer one is fundamentally where the subcontinent highlights a unique element of the various empires which existed in the area principally 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 they relied on borrowed technology or borrowed concepts which were then adapted to local context, be it religion, legal tradition, infrastructure, technology, political presentation, or even mandates which gave credence to the head of state. The head of state here could either be the Sultan, could either be the Maharaj, could either be the, the Emperor or the Raja or any such major entity that holds political influence, essentially. So that isn't to say that this interaction was one-sided. Borrowed words go both ways, as do cultural and literal and literary exchanges. Food is a significant comparator. It was the key factor which led to the initial invasions of the subcontinent, after all. This is especially true when we consider the examples of how empires established themselves in the subcontinent in fact even providing a background story for how some of them were even founded because at the end of the day if you didn't have access to agricultural land or any sort of pastoral entities through which you could sustainably raise and educate and take care of your crop and your order and your people so it makes sense that you would invade others it's integral to the overall identity of this region. Another aspect is styling. Not clothes, styling. 
Clothes were universal across all cultures and existences, yet how these clothes were draped, adorned, tailored, and adapted is an example of how the empires viewed themselves. This is something which also influenced what we call the age of colonialism. Not to say that there has been an end to the age of empires, as we mentioned earlier. It's just that we call empire in this video a different aspect compared to how it is used in the modern context. Drug empires exist after all, but we're not concerned with those. We are only concerned with the elements that help these drug empires channel themselves or adapt themselves or structure themselves. So we acknowledge that and it is also tended to show the clothes tended to show the different opinions of the people who had formed the ideology which we call the age of colonialism from the European perspective yet it is the foundation for various non-European empires which existed at the time when the colonialism eras had begun and established itself. Both clothes and food nevertheless require land which is also an influencer for how previous colonial empires established themselves. Land near to a seaport or land which was fertile and capable of crops and agricultural or livestock output was always the priority in all circumstances, as we mentioned earlier. Historical, archaeological and anthropological evidence will always support this fundamental truth. Since clothes, foods and land are the three essentials, in any empire, really, or in any enterprise, which invariably becomes empire. And they are often correlated with how we often view and perceive various empires. The various lands and the people in them would directly correlate with how they presented themselves and how they interacted and eventually overwhelmed each other. Acknowledging this aspect, yes, each predecessor had used affluence to coerce successor empire policies. The Mughal Empire infused Persian finesse and cultural identity with high Hinduism perspectives, while also causing the growth of martial races that remained a permanent scourge and benefit for the European empires right up till the independence of India and Pakistan in 1947. And this is highlighted in the timelines which were seen by everyone involved. This, however, is a brief overview and a limited perspective on a nuanced and well-documented and highly fascinating region, substantially so when it is compared with neighboring areas. For more information, there are a number of books that discuss this particular topic and they're highlighted in the bibliography of this video itself. At the same time, we've linked to a longer video, a longer discussion, essentially an unedited, unabridged essay specifically discussing this particular aspect of how empires came to be, of how governments came to be and how they structured themselves in, in broad strokes. TCA is grateful to all its patrons and donors for their constant support and appreciation of our cause. We would be grateful if you could like and subscribe our channel and if you may, whenever it is possible for you, fellow listener, to check out our other works as well.